Good morning, it's Mark Wiens. I'm in Munich, Germany, and we just decided last night to take a quick day trip today to Salzburg, Austria. Uh, it's gonna be a really fun day. We're gonna eat some amazing Austrian food and just walk around and explore Salzburg, and we're about to catch the train now. When you take the train in Germany, uh, you can pre-book your tickets online. So I already booked the ticket and then you can get a, a digital mobile ticket. All you do is show up at the train station, you jump on your train, and then they, yeah, they check your ticket once you are in the train and we have about 15 minutes until our train leaves. Just want to quickly say a big thank you to 23andMe for sponsoring me to come on this trip. I took a DNA test, I figured out my ancestry, and I traveled to this region of Europe to discover the food and I'm excited to be here. And right now 23andMe is hosting the Golden 23 Sweepstakes where you have a chance to win a trip to a destination of your ancestry. The link is in the description box below. Check it out for all the details. And we are getting ready to leave now to Salzburg. And we're boarded into the train. And this train actually goes all the way to Budapest in Hungary. Uh, but it should be about a one, I think about a one and a half hour ride to get to Salzburg. And welcome to Austria. That was quite a beautiful ride. I enjoyed uh, coming into the mountains and then I fell asleep for a few minutes and we arrived. You might already know this, but Salzburg is famous for two main reasons. Number one, it's the city where Mozart was born. And number two, it is the city where The Sound of Music was filmed. And also it just looks like a beautiful city. It is a beautiful city surrounded by mountains. One of the famous places to visit in Salzburg is the Mirabel Gardens and Palace. And so we've, we've just walked here. It's on the way to the old city. We're gonna stop here first. Oh, oh wow, Ying. Yeah, look at all the flowers. The gardens are really nice and very neatly manicured, lots of colorful flowers. We're walking across the bridge, across the river. Wow, it is pretty picturesque. And on our way to go eat lunch. It's a little bit before the lunch restaurant opens, so we decided to stop at this cafe. This is a really nice porch cafe overlooking the river and the old city. This yeah. one is the Kleine, Kleine, Kleine Braunen. Kleine yes. Braunen. And that's the apple soup. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. This is a coffee that I wanted to try in Austria, and I think it's just a shot of espresso with a little side of milk. And so I think you, I think I'll just dump the milk in the espresso. Oh, beautiful. And let's taste that. Oh, that's wonderful. You've got the same espresso strongness, but just a, a wonderful, slight creaminess to it. Okay, and then apple strudel. An apple strudel is one of the most uh, well-known of all Austrian desserts. It is a, there, there's layers of, of pastry and apple in there. Oh, it just sort of collapses. Oh, and you can smell the cinnamon in there and get some of that cream. I want that blueberry. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's served hot and the apples just sort of melt in your mouth. You can taste the cinnamon in there. The top layer of pastry is a little bit crispy and then you have kind of like gooey layers of a pastry. It's That's amazing. 
coffee was good and that's really kind of like a arty coffee shop where you go to relax and enjoy the view. It's very relaxing, but I am very ready for some bigger and better food. Conveniently just up the road, there is a restaurant that uh, we're gonna go eat some hopefully amazing Austrian food at. This is a pretty cool passageway. I guess it opens. And I love the wood furnishings on the inside. They have a nice indoor section and we got a table with a view to the window to the mountains and then they also have a nice patio outside. The menu is full of classic Austrian dishes as well as some local specialties and just ordered a a bunch of food including an interesting soup that I'm gonna try first that I can't wait to try. This is something I can say I never have had before. This is gonna be my first time. Frothed beer soup. And then it's served in a beer mug and then you can see there's croutons on top as well as green onions and then it is, you can see all that froth on top as well. My first time for froth, whoa that's foamy. Oh it's like a cream of, I think it's a cream of something. Maybe, I, I guess that's beer but something else too and then oh that smells incredible you can smell oh what do i smell in there maybe rye but it is like kind of like frothy like a beer and then it is i think that's rye bread or rye croutons on the top it has a rye flavor to it and then that's just like a kind of a soothing creamy soup hmm Maybe I can taste a little bit of beer in the aftertaste. Thank you. Wow. I ordered two main dishes. I'm very excited because this is gonna be my first time to ever try a real authentic Wiener Schnitzel in Austria. And Wiener Schnitzel is, it's the, one of the, the most well-known Austrian dishes in the entire world. It is a very thin strip of veal, which is then breaded, uh, coated in breadcrumbs and deep fried. The other dish I really wanted to try is this uh, dish, which is pasta with a cheese, melted cheese all over it. And then these are fried onions and then green onions all over it. Yeah, I gotta begin with that Wiener Schnitzel. Cut, oh, it's very, very, yeah, it's very thin. And you can, you can even feel that the breading is quite thin as well. I'm gonna take a, oh, it's very tender. Let's take a look at that, take a look at that inside. Let me turn that around. Yeah, it's very thin. And then you can see how delicate the breadcrumb wrapper is as well. Mmm. The breadcrumbs are very, very fine. And then very crispy. And that, that meat is very tender under there, that veal. But that looks pretty good. It's amazingly tender and delicate. And I love how it's so thin. Kind of like a berry tasting jam. That gives it a little sweet contrast to the saltiness of it. Really fried perfectly though. They, they did an excellent job. Oh, they're really silky potatoes. And I think it has a little bit of a light butter sauce over it as well. Moving into the, the cheesy pasta. Oh, that's just like dense with cheese. Oh, oh, it's just filled with cheese and you can see those fried onions. Oh, this is, this looks incredible. That is a cheese lover's dream. It's so creamy with cheese. And then you've got that extra dimension of the fried edge as well as those fried onions, which which take it to the next level. Oh, it's just like so sticky. There's so much cheese in there. Those fried onions on there really, really make the difference. I would add a few more handfuls of fried onions on there if I could. Thank you. Thank you. Lunch is over. That was really good food. The cheesy noodles, Austrian cheesy noodles. That was, that was delicious. We're now walking down the street on our way to Old Town and gonna just explore Old Town for a while now.
we don't have that much time left, so we're heading straight over to eat a Salzburg-style sausage next. And I think it's right down this walking street. Okay, here it is. It's called the Balkan Grill, and there is a, a long line, so I'm gonna wait it out. Smell, you can even smell the, the grilling sausage throughout this entire uh, passageway. Ying went off to go walk around and do some shopping. Micah and I are gonna hang out in the line and wait for the sausage. Thank you. Okay, Micah and I each got a snack. I got the, the, the classic Bosna dogs, uh, the Salzburg style sausage, and Micah has a, what is this thing? Uh, the baby he has a He has a baby crunchy snack. This is a, definitely a legendary thing to eat when you're in Salzburg. And what they do, they have a number of different variations that you can order with different toppings, but I just went with the original. They take a piece of bread, she adds in some onions, and then puts in a duo of sausages, grilled sausages, and then sprinkles on some kind of a curry powder. And um, it smells incredible. It's, it's kind of light, it's not as heavy as I, I thought picking it up. You can smell some spices and some, some parsley in there as well. I'm gonna scoot them forward, so I, I make my first bite a very memorable first bite. Okay, that should be perfect right there. Oh, the bread is kind of, I think the bread is grilled too, the, so it's crispy on the outside, but then it's, it feels really fluffy at the same time. Oh yeah. Oh, they're piping hot. Oh, that is excellent though. The sausage is just perfectly salty and then it has that wonderful grilled flavor to it. You can taste that curry powder, uh, which is also tastes kind of salty as well. And then just with onions in there, and then yeah, that bread. That bread is really good. It's, it's, you get, it's got that, those grill marks on it. It's crispy, but then it's fluffy on the inside. It's really light. That sausage is it's really, really good. It has like the perfect consistency. It's not completely smooth. It has a little bit of texture to it, but at the same time, it's very tender. And, mm, oh, those onions are amazing too. Mm. Micah, how's that snack down there? Wow, that is really, really good. If you come to Salzburg, that's something you have to eat. The, 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 to me, that sausage had the perfect consistency and I liked it with that dust of uh, curry powder. I could have used a little bit of sauce um, there wasn't any sauce on it. Maybe some mustard would have been, I would have liked some mustard, a little bit of sauce on it would have, it was the only thing, but those sausages were amazing. Unfortunately, time goes by really, really fast when you're just walking around and waiting for food. So we're actually almost out of time because there's still one more legendary restaurant in Salzburg that I gotta try before leaving. So I think we're just gonna quickly walk around Old Town and then head back to the to one final legendary restaurant in Salzburg before we head out. The old town of Salzburg, it is very tourism driven. There are lots of people here, uh, but at the same time, it's very scenic. It's really a nice place to walk around. I wish we had more time to explore and see some of the attractions. Oh, and if you come here, you can take a horse as well, a horse carriage. We're back in that same area of town, right where we had lunch. I'm climbing up the stairs over the hill to try to get a view, and then gonna climb down the stairs on the other side. And that's where a, a very well-known local brew house and restaurant, Austrian restaurant is located. Wow, just climbed a few flights of stairs and the views are incredible. And there's a, a church or a monastery up here as well. And then there are this is actually the, the cliff walls with the fort walls as well. And then the brew house is just down the road here. This is an amazing place. You walk underneath the bridge and then you, the cobblestone streets and this place is called Augustiner Brau. This is a, this is a Salzburg institution and I know they have a beer hall plus a beer garden and Oh, kind of quiet in here. 
They actually just opened for the day. The entrance is kind of kind of empty and kind of huge and it feels almost like a monastery in here. Oh, cool. Check that out. Immediately as I opened the door, I got this aroma of ham and sausage. Oh, that's exactly what you want to smell when you enter a building like this. The garden is fantastic. They have a bunch of tables set up under the trees. You get drinks and then they have food stalls all around. So you just get whatever you want. It's all self-service. You go sit down. We need a beverage. Uh, this is really awesome. You grab your own cup. So I got the half liter and they also have liter cups. Sorry. And you, then you, you come over here and you, I think you're supposed to wash off your cup. Wash off your cup. And by the way, Micah is having his afternoon nap and then you get back in the line. Thank you very much. This is such a cool place. You get so you once you get your cup, then you walk up there. It's a little confusing, uh, but it's only confusing your first time. Once you've done it once, then you know exactly what to do. Uh, but you give them your receipt and your cup, and he fills your beer right out of the barrel. And you come down and you have a seat wherever you like. Wow. Oh, it's really, really frothy. It's crisp. It's cool, like perfectly cool. You, you can actually taste it's right out of the barrel. Oh, that's fantastic. And now I'm gonna go get some food real fast. Yeah, let's get some. Magst du Kartoffelspalten dazu oder irgendwas? Uh, zwei Mal einen Ofen Kartoffeln dazu. Ja, gern. One sausage, one ribs. One sausage, one ribs. Yeah, and, and one potatoes. Yeah, sure. No. Here, uh, my special hot sauce. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Jesus for cleaning up the hands after. Okay, thanks. Okay. Hey, Micah. Micah woke up from his nap, and we just got some ribs and sausage. Certainly. Okay. Yeah. Yes, please. And also, I just saw the fish stall. Had to get a grilled fish. Okay, this tray is full. It's time to go back to the table. All right, we got some food. There's all sorts of things that you can choose from. And actually, as I was just walking around, I saw a lady with a whole plate of ribs. And that's why I said I have to have the ribs because the ribs look fantastic. And it's a little smokehouse. He, he looks like he, he is passionate about smoking and grilling meat. And then there's another plate I got with a sausage, which is a, a really plump, juicy looking sausage. And I got a side of potatoes. He served that with mustard and a side of some kind of creamy sauce. Let's unwrap this fish. Oh, it's so hot right off the grill. Oh, and, oh cool. Okay, it's, it's roasted and then it's still stuffed with the sick and then she stuffed in a, a lemon wedge into the, the carcass there. Okay, let me reach over for one of these ribs. Oh yeah, that is so tender. It is kind of oily and creamy. And the one layer. Oh, that sauce is good. It's kind of more sweet than spicy, but it sort of has like a, a little bit of zing to it. Time to try this sausage. And it was a pretty good sized sausage. It would have taken up the entire length of the plate, but he chopped it into pieces. You can see how how plump and juicy this sausage is gonna be. Oh, and I can smell, that's the, that's the good hot mustard. Good sausage, good mustard. It's plump, it's fluffy, it's, yeah, it's really good. It's really tender and awesome. And then that mustard is the hot mustard, it's fantastic. Something else cool they have here are, are wooden forks instead of plastic forks. Roasted potatoes here, and I think it came with this sauce. It's a really creamy, really rich sauce. With some herb in there, I think it's, I think it's uh, rosemary. Let me remove this wedge of lemon in there and I'll just start from the side here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's just plain fish. It tastes like it's been salted and you can taste the smokiness of it as well. It would be really good with that lemon. 
I think this is a river fish. It, it's really good. It's not too, a little bit fishy. Um, it's, it's good though. Oh yeah. Wow. It's good food. Good, really good beer. Uh, fantastic atmosphere. We've got to go catch our train like in 10 minutes. So we got to finish off this food and then we're going to run to the train station. You just would not guess that something so fantastic is behind those doors. Yeah. This is the spot right here. Really cool place. And we really need to get to the train station fast now. There's mountains in the background. We made it to the train station with about 10 minutes to spare. Mike and I had to do some jogging to get here though. We made it. Oh, that was a sweaty, sweaty journey here. It was a little bit further than I had expected. Wir müssen hier am Bord des Eurocities der Deutschen Bahn auf den Weg nach Saarbrücken und das Ganze über Rosenheim in München. That was a really fun day trip. Actually, it wasn't even a full day. It was only like, we got there at nine and left at four. It was only seven hours in total. Just an introduction to Austrian food and just an introduction to Salzburg. And honestly, it wasn't enough time. I would have loved to have a couple more days there to explore, uh, but it was, uh, it was a fun trip. I want to say a big thank you to 23andMe for sponsoring this video. I took a DNA test and then I traveled to Germany and this and Austria and to this region. I'll leave 23andMe their link in the description box below so you can check them out for more details. And I want to say a big thank you for watching this video. I will leave all of the information about all the restaurants we ate at in the description box below. And if you have a chance to visit Salzburg, it's a great little city to walk around and explore. Thank you for watching. Uh, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below and if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.